SpaceX is gearing up for the seventh integrated flight test of Starship, a mission that incorporates numerous upgrades and significant design changes compared to earlier flights. At the heart of this mission is Ship 33, the first Block 2 Starship, which boasts substantial design enhancements. Ship 33 has successfully completed all pre-launch tests and is currently stationed inside Megabay 2 for final inspections, hardware checks, and any necessary repairs or modifications ahead of Flight 7. On the other hand, Booster 14, the super-heavy booster assigned to this mission, is also undergoing pre-launch preparations in the Megabay. Recently, the booster received extra structural reinforcements, with additional stringers installed around its common dome area to enhance the overall strength of the vehicle. The need for structural upgrades on Booster 14 is directly tied to the characteristics of Ship 33. As the first Block 2 variant, Ship 33 features larger propellant tanks capable of holding more methane and oxygen, increasing its mass significantly. Moreover, Ship 33 is 1.8 meters taller than previous models due to an extra stainless steel ring section, which further adds to the weight. The additional stringers are engineered to distribute this increased load more evenly increasing the overall rigidity of the booster, mitigating potential stress points, and ensuring the booster can safely support the heavier and taller upper stage during launch and flight. In addition to the reinforcements, Booster 14 recently received its hot stage ring, signaling that pre-launch preparations are nearing completion. Once both Ship 33 and Booster 14 are ready, they will be rolled out to the launch site for stacking. The next critical milestone will be the full-stack propellant load test, which will serve as the final verification of the rocket system integrity and performance. SpaceX has been hard at work preparing the launch pad and tower for the upcoming mission. Over the past week, the booster quick disconnect mechanism underwent detailed inspections and adjustments, including work on its hood, retraction mechanism, propellant delivery ports, and other components. Painting of the launch mount legs has also begun, part of routine maintenance to protect against corrosion and ensure structural integrity. The launch tower arms, critical for lifting and catching operations, also received upgrades. Along with enhancements to their actuation systems, new lifting pins were installed on both arms. These pins are vital for safely engaging with the booster and ship during stacking and post-flight recovery. This work signifies that a full stack for Flight 7 could soon be assembled. With hardware preparations nearing completion, SpaceX has cleared a major hurdle with the FAA's issuance of a launch license. This confirms that the company has met all required safety, environmental, and regulatory standards. While SpaceX has not announced an official target date for Flight 7, a recent NASA document filed with the FAA suggests that the mission could occur as early as January 11th. The construction of the second launch pad at Starbase is making rapid progress alongside preparations for Flight 7. One of the primary areas of focus is the flame trench, where significant progress is being made. Along with trench digging, teams are actively installing commodity pipes, which will either carry propellant for the booster stage or water for the deluge system. The exact purpose of these pipes should become clearer in the coming days. Key components of the Pad B flame deflector have also begun arriving at Starbase. From their design, it is evident that the flame deflector will be an evolution of the design used at the static fire test pad at Massey's. While Massey's employs a single bucket diverter to channel exhaust, the Pad B flame deflector will feature a double bucket configuration. This improved design is tailored to handle the increased thermal and acoustic demands of Starship launches. Progress on the Pad B launch tower is equally remarkable. Teams are finalizing the installation of the draw work mechanism, a critical system that enables precise and controlled movement of the chopstick arms along the length of the tower. Work is also underway on assembling the tower arms. The arms, along with the carriage system, are being prepared at Sanchez for transport to the launch site and subsequent installation on the tower. A dedicated assembly jig is being set up for this purpose. The arms will first be integrated with the carriage system on this jig, ensuring all components are properly aligned and secured. Once assembly is complete, the arms will be carefully lifted and installed onto the tower. Simultaneously, the orbital launch mount for Pad B is taking shape at the Sanchez site. Work has begun on the top layer of the mount, which includes water-cooled steel plates. These plates utilize a high-flow water system to protect the pad from the extreme heat generated by the Raptor engines during ignition and liftoff. Once the primary structure of the launch mount is complete, teams will install its internal components. This includes the booster hold-down clamps and the quick disconnect mechanisms for the 20 outer engines. These mechanisms deliver high-pressure gases to the outer engine's pre-burners, ensuring the turbo pumps are spun up and ready for ignition. To support future launches from Pad B, SpaceX is expanding the capacity of the nearby tank farm. 
Construction crews are integrating several new horizontal and vertical storage tanks into the existing tank farm infrastructure. Additionally, concrete work is ongoing to extend the tank farm pad. This expansion will accommodate the installation of more propellant storage tanks, which are expected to arrive over the coming weeks and months. The excavation of tunnels and the installation of propellant delivery pipelines connecting the tank farm to pad B are also making steady progress. Assuming no major delays or unforeseen issues arise, it's reasonable to estimate that Pad B could be fully operational and ready for its inaugural launch by mid to late 2025. After completing the assembly and finalizing the electrical and plumbing systems, SpaceX transported Super Heavy Booster 15 to the Massey's test site this week. Booster 15 will undergo multiple cryo-proof tests at Massey's in the coming days. This comprehensive test not only ensures the reliability of the plumbing, but also provides engineers with the valuable data they need to assess the booster's ability to withstand various flight stresses and detect potential leaks in its structure. Booster 15 is designated for Flight 8, alongside Starship 34. The fully assembled Ship 34 is housed inside Megabay 2, where it is undergoing preparations for cryogenic proof testing. A new Starlink satellite dispenser was spotted at Starbase recently, showcasing significant upgrades over its predecessor. This Starlink dispenser is specifically engineered to efficiently deploy Starlink satellites into orbit. The original dispenser, made from stainless steel components, was designed to accommodate approximately 40 Starlink Gen 2 satellites. While this earlier version has flown in integrated flight tests, it never carried actual Starlink satellites. The newly spotted dispenser features many design upgrades aimed at accommodating the larger and more massive Gen 3 Starlink satellites. By comparing the dimensions of the old and new dispensers, it is estimated that the upgraded system can hold approximately 54 Gen 3 satellites, offering a significant improvement in payload capacity. Unlike its predecessor, which featured a rectangular base constructed from flat, perforated steel pieces with triangular cutouts, the new dispenser base has a goldish tint and a semi-angular shape. It employs thicker materials with reinforced structural elements for added strength and durability. These reinforcements are critical for supporting the increased mass of Gen 3 satellites. To ensure both strength and reduced weight, it is likely that the new dispenser will use lightweight materials such as aluminium, as opposed to the stainless steel used in the previous design. Despite these structural upgrades, the satellite loading and deployment process remains largely unchanged. Satellites are stacked into the dispenser using a pallet stacking mechanism, with each satellite placed one above the other. The dispenser then releases the satellites one by one through the payload bay door into their designated orbits. The new dispenser was moved into Megabay 2 on Thursday morning, likely for installation into Ship 35, which is scheduled to begin stacking next week. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. On December 24, NASA's Parker Solar Probe made history by flying closer to the Sun than any human-made object ever has before, coming within just 6.1 million kilometers of the solar surface. Launched in August 2018, the Parker Solar Probe has been on a mission to unlock the secrets of our star. After entering the Sun's orbit in November of that same year, the probe has been following a meticulously designed trajectory, employing multiple gravity assists from Venus to propel itself into ever closer encounters with the Sun. The spacecraft is equipped with an array of sophisticated instruments designed to delve into solar physics. Before this record-setting flyby on Christmas Eve, the probe had already completed 21 close approach us, with the previous closest approach at 7.26 million kilometers. These encounters are crucial for collecting data on the Sun's outermost atmosphere, the corona, which, bafflingly, is much hotter than the Sun's surface, despite being further from the core. The probe also helps us understand the mechanisms behind the acceleration of solar wind as it departs from the sun, which influences space weather across our solar system. Additionally, the probe examines the formation of solar events like coronal mass ejections and solar flares, which can significantly impact Earth's technological infrastructure, from satellites to power grids. The probe, during its flybys, experiences intense solar radiation, offering a unique opportunity to study the solar phenomena at close quarters. The latest flyby was not only the closest, but also the fastest, with the probe reaching speeds up to 692,000 km per hour, setting a new record for the fastest human-made object. The probe's heat shield, made of carbon composite, faced temperatures around 980 degrees Celsius, demonstrating its resilience against solar heat. As the Parker Solar Probe mission progresses into its seventh year, scientists are eager to see how much closer they can get. The probe is scheduled for four more ultra-close approaches in 2025, each one a step further in our understanding of solar dynamics.
The primary mission of the spacecraft is set to conclude with its 26th close approach in December next year. Although NASA has not officially announced an extension, the wealth of scientific data suggests there might be opportunities for continued operations if the spacecraft remains in good health, and there are compelling scientific goals to achieve. SpaceX successfully launched the Bandwagon 2 rideshare mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base on December 21st atop a Falcon 9 rocket. The mission carried 30 satellites into a mid-inclination orbit. Although SpaceX did not broadcast the deployment process, they later confirmed that all satellites were successfully placed into the intended 590-kilometer orbit, inclined at 45 degrees to the equator. SpaceX announced the bandwagon missions in August 2023, aimed at launching satellites into mid-inclination orbits, ranging from 550 to 605 kilometers. The bandwagon missions are different from SpaceX's transporter rideshare missions, as they focus on mid-inclination orbits, while the transporter missions primarily target sun-synchronous orbits. A key payload on Bandwagon 2 was the third satellite from South Korea's 425 project, which focuses on reconnaissance and surveillance capabilities for military applications. The first satellite of this project was launched in December 2023, followed by the second during the Bandwagon 1 mission in April this year. ISI launched two synthetic aperture radar satellites on Bandwagon 2, capable of providing high-resolution radar imaging capabilities for various applications, including disaster management, maritime surveillance, and environmental monitoring. The Finnish company has launched 40 satellites to date, expanding its constellation for Earth observation. Hawkeye 360 deployed three of its radio frequency geolocation microsatellites, increasing its operational fleet to 30. These microsatellites will operate collectively to pinpoint the origins of radio frequency transmissions on Earth, providing vital data for applications such as maritime domain awareness, spectrum management, and defense intelligence. Bandwagon 2 also included multiple payloads from small satellite operators supporting a diverse range of objectives, from commercial endeavors to scientific research. Looking ahead, SpaceX plans to continue the bandwagon series, offering more cost-effective launch opportunities to mid-inclination orbits, and expanding the customer base for the company's rideshare services. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.